Hey everyone, what's up? I'm Colby Cheese and today we're going to be talking about how to level up from using online tutorials such as Codecademy, Khan Academy, all of those cool online editors that allow you to write your code in the web and it's automatically updating. How to go from that to coding locally and using your own computer to compile your code and make changes and experiment and all those sorts of awesome things that you need to know how to do to become a developer. So why would you worry about this specifically or when do you need to worry about this? Honestly, I'd say once you really start to grasp the very basics of learning to code, you're probably going to be in the same situation that I was uh, you know, back when I was trying to learn and I was using those, those same tutorials in that, okay, I get some of the stuff that's happening online, but I wanna do my own experimentation. I wanna do my own cool shit. You know, I wanna take those examples from CodePan and play with them myself locally rather than online. And I wanna, and I wanna keep copies of them. And you're gonna to need to learn these skills eventually. So why not have it all in one space? That's what this video is all about. All right, I'm gonna try and be as brief as possible and give you the exact roadmap into what you need as a beginning developer to have success and get this thing going as quickly as possible. A couple of things you're gonna need are a place to write your code. So I'm gonna show you what code editor to use and you're going to need to have some sort of tool that turns your code that you're writing into a usable form that is viewable on the browser. So that means a build tool, and I'll show you how to set up that. And then you're going to also need a couple of command line utilities. So I'll show you how to install all of that stuff real quickly as well. And once you combine all these things, you'll be all ready to go and you'll be coding up a storm and you'll feel pretty damn leveled up. Now there's a lot of things to learn about this. There is a reason that most of these beginner tutorials and courses all use an online code editor as opposed to having you do everything locally. And that's because there are a large set of problems depending on your environment and your computer that you're using. All of these things can be an issue. I'm gonna try and distill it down to as simple of a video as possible. If you run into problems, leave a comment. I'll try and help you out. But for now, let's get going. You will be spending the majority of your time writing code in your code editor. Therefore, logic dictates you want that experience to be the most enjoyable and the most efficient. You'll be spending more time thinking and staring at this screen than anything else, really. Therefore, you should probably get this choice right. It's actually not that complicated, however, and you're gonna be spending more time doing your own customizations than choosing the right tool. But I'm gonna go ahead and give it to you. You need to download Atom. If you're a new coder and you're not currently locked in to some other platform, then just go right now, search Google and download Atom. This is the code editor that was developed by GitHub, which is another tool you'll be using to do all of their editing within. You may hear a lot of people talk about many other range of tools or development environments. Don't worry about it. Just get Atom. If you're a new developer, download Atom. That's gonna do everything you need. Now, if you hear about people talking about Sublime, that's a great tool as well. It was built you know, a while back, but Atom is much better. It's going to be even much better, I guess, if that's the way, way to say it, in the future. So just get Atom, start using it. Now, you may bookmark or think about trying to learn how to use Vim. There is a Vim mode within Atom. That is a probably the most enjoyable way to write anything. Like if you're, even if you were like a book author, I would tell you to learn how to use Vim for editing any kind of text. But that's not in the scope of this video. So just, you know, put that as a to-do list item to learn how to use Vim and, you know, maybe use the, the Vim mode within Atom. But I'm just gonna put that as a side note. That's what I use personally. However, as a new coder, I would never recommend somebody try to learn Vim and learn to code at the same exact time. So download Atom and you'll be good to go for writing your code. Everything will be set up for you. Okay, awesome. Now that you have a place to write your code, you need to make sure that your command line is all set up because you'll be doing a lot of 
development work within the command line. So of course, logic dictates again that you want your command line to be set up correctly. You don't have to do all of the crazy customizations that perhaps someone like me has already. However, you can start moving in that direction. You can just get the basics out of the way so that you can start doing step one, which is, you know, coding locally, right? That's what this is about. So in order to do all of that, there are just a few things you need, which are going to be first off node. You need to make sure that node is installed on your computer. So go ahead and Google node. There is a very quick, how to install node on their website. They'll walk you through the getting started. This is going to be as a developer, pretty much your, your go-to place. Anytime you learn a new tool or look up something new, you're always going to be looking for the, the getting started, right? A lot of tools are basically make or break by how well their getting started pages. You notice that node has a really nice getting started and they'll walk you through how to install node. Once you have node installed, all of the other tools are very easy to install as well. So we're going to be installing Gulp. So go ahead and Google Gulp and you'll see how to install that once Node is done installing. You'll also wanna make sure, and this is for Mac, but make sure that you have GitHub desktop installed. You're going to really, really think me later. If you haven't already began putting things on GitHub, you want to start as soon as possible. So just have the tool installed and be ready to use Git in all of your projects. Even if it's a little toy project, you want to be constantly using Git. Just have it in the back of your mind that every single project that you use, you're going to be using Git and pushing your code to GitHub. All right. So make sure those tools are installed. Node, Gulp, GitHub, and the Atom editor. Once you have all of that stuff ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up Gulp, which is your build tool, because you want to be able to edit your code, hit the save button and see that change show up instantly in the browser. Also, browsers can't read SAS. You should not be writing CSS, just vanilla. People don't do that. That's like, that's like writing machine code, basically. Like CSS is what, what, uh, what things are compiled down into. You should be writing your code in a preprocessor such as SAS. So we'll be, you know, I'm not going to get into best practices and things like that, but essentially Gulp will compile all of that stuff into the CSS that your browser needs to be able to read. And then it will automatically refresh all of the changes that you've made every time you hit save and your entire workflow will be fun and enjoyable. So, all right, once you have all of those tools installed, I'm going to show you how to set up Gulp and your little environment so that you can edit HTML and CSS and JavaScript and good to go. Thumbs up. Happy times. All right. The good news is you don't actually have to know how to write a gulp file as they call it. That's, that's basically what you need in order to build these projects. There's plenty of starting points on the web. All you have to do is just, just Google for that stuff. So the, I know Google has one web starter kit. Let's click that. This is a really nice one to start with web starter kit. It comes with all of the stuff you need written into your cult file, a lot of boilerplate. Anytime you hear the word boilerplate, it's just all the starting point code that you need so that you can start on your own projects. Another one, I think if you just type in gulp starter project, I think that's it. Gulp starter project, gulp starter, bam. Um, maybe it's this one. Yep. That's it. Either of these will do exactly what you need to get started as a newbie without any knowledge of what the hell is going on inside of these projects. I'm gonna go ahead and give you this quick rundown. The funny thing is I didn't actually know how to use Gulp and NPM and all this shit for like months of development. Like I had actually already gotten a job and I still didn't know how to do a lot of this stuff, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's way easier than I thought it would be. It's kind of like using a light switch. You don't have to know how everything works. You just need to know how to flip the switch. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Hopefully you have downloaded the GitHub desktop app. That's going to make this entire process way easier. You may need to pause this video. If you don't have a GitHub account and you haven't downloaded the app and set it up, I would go ahead and do that right now. It should only take you a couple of minutes, but please do that. Once you do, you can go ahead and click the save Google web starter kit to your computer and use it in GitHub desktop. I'm going to click that now. 
and bam, it opens up the desktop app for me. I can name it whatever I would like. My default folder is projects, web starter kit. We'll just go ahead and name it that. Well, I'm gonna Google starter kit. That, that way I know what it is. And we'll go ahead and click clone. So what it's gonna do is pull down that project from Google's repository on GitHub and place it onto my local computer, all right? So now I have all of the files. I can right click and open in terminal. I can also open in Atom. This is what's great. See, I told you guys to get Atom. It actually integrates perfectly within your GitHub desktop app. This is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up in terminal. And there's a couple things you have to do in general with most of these projects, especially the ones that have like Gulp and NPM stuff all installed. If we go back to the project and scroll down, there's usually pretty good readmes on these things uh, as to how to get started, right? I remember earlier in the video, I said, always look for that getting started. Uh, this one tells you blah, 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 download or clone the repo. We just did that. And in general, you're probably gonna have to do something like NPM install. That's, that's usually the, uh, the starting point. I look over the installation docs. Okay, whatever. Oh, yep, there it is. NPM install gulp. Okay, we've already done all that. Hopefully you've done that. Installed gulp. And then NPM install. Yep, that's pretty much the same. That's You're gonna do that in like any project that uses NPM. That's just the way the web works these days. I'm sure if you went over and you got the gulp starter instead, you can see, okay, get clone. Yep, they're basically doing the command line version go into the folder, npm install, and then npm run gulp. Okay, perfect. So either way, whatever you decide to use, like that's up to you, but we're gonna go ahead and go with this Google project. We're gonna say npm install, and let's see what happens. Okay, great. npm decides it's going to grab all of the dependencies. Now you don't have to understand what's happening here. You have to know what a dependency is or, or whatever. You just have to know that this project is already set up for you, the gulp file and the package.json and all that shit, it's already set up. So all we care about, at least in the scope of this video, is being able to edit shit locally on your computer and get away from using those online editors and tutorials. All right, so this is gonna go ahead and do its thing. I'm gonna jump back into the tool here and we're gonna right click open in Atom as well. So this project is gonna open itself up in, in my Atom editor while everything is being installed. So once that is all ready to go, I will show you what to do next. My npm install finished doing its thing, so now all I really need to do is type in gulp. Wham bam, we'll go ahead and try that. You can see all of the stuff in the command line running its course, and we should be good to go. So what it did was some compilation, but well, okay. Actually, for this project, it's a little bit different. We need to do gulp serve is what it looks like. Yep, there we go. So gulp serve, that's the way Google's web starter kit is built. Um, in fact, like now that I cloned the project, I can see the readme. You can see this is markdown. Wait, let me go back to their, their website here. I think they actually tell you that um, npm install. So eh, maybe maybe, they're, maybe they're, their docs could be a little bit better. Configure your system, blah, blah, blah. You might also want to get you some of the commands available. Oh, okay, that's where they talk about it. Gulp, sir. okay. So yeah, if you, if you clicked on commands, they, they have the docs. It, most people, like the the convention is to, to either you would type gulp and it starts up a server for you, or you type gulp serve and it starts the server for you. So good stuff. Yep, none of this is really important. All we need to know is gulp serve. So what happened when I typed in gulp serve was it created this little file right here. Or, or it actually, it opened this browser window for me, localhost 3000, that's where browser sync, which is the tool that Gulp is running, um, opened up and up on my, on my desktop. So this is all local shit, this is not running on the web, okay? But this is what the Google Web Starter Kit came with, just some boilerplate HTML using their little thing, okay? But all you need to know is, okay, what if you just wanna edit an HTML file and some CSS? Well, all you have to do is go in here. You can delete all this stuff if you wanted to and just start doing your own thing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I think we're at um, index.html, probably. So I bet you if I went in here and just deleted everything, 
you would see that update instantly. So let's go ahead and start with body. I'm gonna go just delete to the bottom, delete that and put in some of my own text. Hello, and save it. Bam, look at that. <laughs> Tiny little text that says hello. So as you can see, I'm now editing locally. I can play around with stuff as I see fit. Let's go to the styles, we can play with that. Um, so this is set up to work with SAS. I don't know why we have main.css. Am I not in the source? I don't know. Uh, anyways, looks like we're pretty good. So if I wanted to change some stuff around, I can change the font. You know, we can we can say font size is two rim, real big, you know, and uh, okay, it's not changed, whatever. Anyways, the point is, everything is now in your hands to play with. There's a lot of boilerplate going on here. You may want to look around for different starter kits. I just pulled this one up on Google. I've actually never used it before. <laughs> I, I wrote my own, but it was a pain in the ass, so I didn't want to tell you guys to use mine. I wanted you to use something that is supported and out there and constantly updated. You may have some buddies or someone you work with that has their own starter kit. The point is, you can find all of this just by reading around in the docs on the starter points. And as a newbie going straight from tutorials online, it's so much easier to just have the starting point, run gulp, and then start playing with stuff on your own. You can just delete all the other stuff that you don't want. I can just go in here, delete, 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 who cares? Who cares about all this junk, you know? And uh, it doesn't really matter. You're, you're, you're doing your own thing. You, if you break it, then whatever, right? You can easily start over from scratch. You now have the, the desktop. You've got Atom to do all of your editing for you. Your command line tools are all set up and you're good to go. At this point, it's in your hands to move forward. I would say figure out, like right now, I don't actually use Atom. I recommend Atom to people. I generally use Vim and Tmux, but that's way out of the scope of this video. So some next steps would be to just kind of get familiar with, with using the uh, Atom editor and, and with, with using some of the command line features. You know, you want to be able to know how to like move around in the command line, like LS for, for this or like CD to jump, you know, whoa, I'm not going to get into like using the command line as a tutorial, but I'm just giving you ideas of like next steps. Just, just slowly start to learn your environment and figure out how to do things locally now that you know how to just get started, right? Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. If you found it useful or if there are things you are confused about that maybe I did not cover correctly, please, please let me know so I can improve future videos. And, uh, you know, I'll respond to those on my website comments or on my YouTube video comments. Just let me know. And I'll see you guys around next time. Peace out.